What is going on everyone? It's Rylan with Rylan's Amazing Photography and today I'm going to be doing some bird and wildlife photography. As you can see behind me, I am at um, Norris Lake, which is in Tennessee. I'm staying in this absolutely beautiful place and there is just like this massive deck. It just goes all over the property and um, you can probably hear a bunch of different birds in the background. There's a geese, there, there's a goose on the lake and there's some birds over in here. Sounds like a wren and there's some other birds over in this direction as well. Um, I'm going to be doing some um, photography of all of those today and then I'll probably see a squirrel or something as well. Um, I've been here for a couple of days. Last night I got some really good photos and I'm going to go ahead and pop those on the screen right now. take back what I said about really good photos that are okay photos um, but something that I'm going to be trying today is using my two times teleconverter and I don't do that a lot I'm using the Nikon D500 and my Nikkor 200 to 500 so basically what the 200 I mean what the teleconverter does is double my focal length so right now the 200 to 500 lens becomes a 400 to 1000 millimeter lens and then the fact that I'm using it on a crop sensor camera means that it's even longer than that. Hang on, let me get out my calculator. Let's see here. Um, 1,000 times 1 1.5 is 1,500. I should have known that, I, you know, it's, it's been a long day. Anyways, that means that this lens is the equivalent of 1,500 millimeters in focal length, which is insane. So what I'm gonna be doing today is photographing the birds and the wildlife around me. Uh, I'm really excited to do this, um, but there is a downside to using the teleconverter. One is I lose, um, I believe it's two stops of light. If it's not two, it's at least one, but I'm pretty sure it's two. Um, I can only shoot on F11. Well, I can go to higher F stops, but I want to stay as low of an F stop as possible to keep some light. Um, the second downside is I have to manual focus. Autofocus doesn't work with this Tamron teleconverter, so I'm manual focusing everything. So that's always a little challenging, but over the years I've gotten pretty good at manual focus because I've had to use it in quite a few different situations. So I'm going to go ahead and look for some birds and hopefully we're going to have some luck. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you all there's not going to be a lot of video to go with today's video besides the videos of myself. Um, I'm not going to be able to get a lot of content of the actual animals that I'm photographing and that's for a couple of reasons. Number one, I'm manual focusing and number two, I'm doing everything handheld. So it's going to be really hard for me to obviously handhold 1500 millimeters um, and get a good stabilized video in focus. So there's not going to be a lot of that, but nonetheless, you're going to get the experience of me photographing some animals. So a squirrel has just um, came out of its little nest up here above me. So I'm going to try to snap some photos. Keep in mind, this squirrel is moving and I'm having to manual focus all at the same time which is rather difficult to be able to accomplish okay okay those look pretty good i think they look um decently sharp when you add a teleconverter onto your lens you're um um, it's not going to be as sharp anyways and the fact that you're manual focusing you can really lose um, quite a bit of sharpness But since you're at f11, it's still decently sharp even though um, you're using a teleconverter. So I've just got to kind of get used to that and it's difficult to get used to so Up here in this tree, there's a tufted titmouse. Um, it's backlit, which is really nice. It's got some great colors. Yes, this looks stunning. Uh, this is this combination is also very heavy. So, um, 
Yeah. Oh, oh, there it goes. Um, it, it jumped about on a couple of different branches, but it wasn't there very long, so you can imagine how difficult it is to be able to find the subject at 1500 millimeters and manual focus it and get a photo all in a matter of about 15 seconds. So that can be pretty challenging at times, but nonetheless, I just, I just pushed right through and um, some of the photos are in focus, not all of them obviously because I'm manual focusing and that's just really difficult to do when hand holding such a large lens and photographing at a large focal length. But nonetheless, some of the images will be keepers and I kind of just spray and pray when it comes to manual focus and do a bunch of different um, focuses and I know that one or at least two of them will be in focus. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on towards this end of the deck more and See if I have any luck down there. So as I was walking to the other end of the lake, um, I could hear a chirp and I looked up and there said a cardinal and it's actually pretty close to me. Um, so I'm gonna try to get a shot. It's not none too scared, which is amazing, obviously. Um, sometimes it can be a little difficult to even find them in my sights, in my, like my line of sight. But, oh yeah, these look great. These look awesome. Oh, he's moving. Let's take some vertical as well. Yes, those look great. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this dude alone. I definitely got some keepers. There's no point in um, continuing to bother him because he gave me a good pose and he was nice and cooperative, we'll say. So I'm not gonna bother him anymore. What I really wish is some bird would land on the red buds beside of me here. I'm pretty sure that won't happen because I've not seen a bird land there the entire time that we've been there. But there are some red buds back here that I've actually seen some birds in. Um, not a whole lot, but a little bit. So I'm gonna go and check that out and maybe we'll get lucky. Y'all, um, you can probably notice that the camera angle hasn't changed and it was because before I even got to change camera angles, um, an eagle just flew in. So um, this is awesome. Um, before I started recording, I actually got some video footage and I got some photos of the eagle perched. He is still currently perched there. Um, I'm going to throw some of those photos and some of those videos on the screen. And then when he starts to move or something, I'm going to touch base with you all again and we'll see what happens. Okay, I think, I think he's about to... Oh yeah, here he goes. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. He gone. But I got some really good shots of him flying. I just hope that out of the 30 some photos that I just snapped in a matter of seconds that um, he has a good pose and he's good and sharp and focused in one of them. Oh my gosh, that's, that's awesome. I've never got to photograph an eagle in the wild ever. I've only, I, I, back when I was younger and I went to Alaska before I did photography, I seen some eagles in the wild. Um, and then at my house one time, I actually saw one eagle in the wild, which is really weird um, for Kentucky where I live. Um, but I didn't have my camera, so I didn't get to take any pictures of it. So this is the first time that I've actually photographed an eagle in the wild. Um, I photographed one at Salado Wildlife Center, but that's, um, 
in a scenario similar to a zoo. So that don't really count, but that was some really, that I, I think that some of those are in focus and I got some good poses in some of those. So um, a lot of the time, he, he flew like kind of back in towards another area of the lake. So I think he's probably hunting. So if we get lucky, maybe we'll see him again later in the video and he'll have a fish or something. I don't know, that would be, that would be really lucky, like probably unreal lucky, but I guess we'll see. And I don't know if y'all can hear it or not, but there's like a frog or something down there that's just throwing an absolute fit. Um, I'm gonna head to the other side of the deck now, like I said I was a minute ago. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad I was paying attention before I went down there or I wouldn't have seen that eagle, so yeah. So back here behind me, you can see um, some of the red buds um, that have just recently bloomed. And there's not any birds on them yet, but they are shaded, um, which is good for the particular lighting situa situation that I'm dealing with, which isn't great at the moment. It's pretty harsh lighting. Um, you could probably tell that in like the cardinal photo and the eagle photos as well. But um, if a bird lands in these, they're gonna be shaded, which is fantastic for um, this lighting. So I've not had any luck yet, but I'm going to stay here for probably anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes. And hopefully during that time frame, I am going to have some luck. Um, any kind of bird would be great. I think a cardinal would look pretty neat in there with the pink. It would really stand out with the red and the pink. Um, a blue jay would also look really cool if it could land in there. And then, of course, there's some other birds um, that are more common species like a sparrow or a wren or a tufted titmouse. Um, there's some woodpeckers in this area as well, but that's not really the kind of tree that a woodpecker would land in. Um, but you never know, so I'm just going to kind of wait around and see if I have any luck um, in this area. So I did have some luck with the red buds. Um, I've not really moved much. You can still see the same cabin behind my head. But I had some luck. Um, I'm really happy with how all of that turned out. Um, he was in the shade and I got some pretty good photos of him there. So I'm, I'm really happy with that. Um, I'm happy with how that turned out. I'm definitely getting some really good shots today um, that I couldn't be more ecstatic about even if I tried to be. Um, it, I don't know if I said this, I've just been rambling, um, but it was a tufted titmouse. Um, it was there for probably a minute or two, so it was there pretty long, so I got to get a bunch of different um, poses of it. It's just a matter of what's in focus and what isn't, and what I can sharpen and what I can't. The eagle is back. Oh my God. Oh my God. I think it, I, it oh my God. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's... It's pretty high, um, and it's not even super close on my, with my 1500 millimeters. So if that, if that don't tell you anything, I don't know what will. Um, it, he, he has a fish in his talons. That's what I could tell that he was carrying something. He, he's still just circling. Okay, he's getting pretty, he, he, he keeps getting pretty high on me. Um, oh my gosh. This is tiring holding this big lens up and it's like 80 degrees outside. Okay, he's, he's getting pretty far away. He's been like circling almost like a vulture would, which is um, kind of odd. I guess he's looking for a place to land to maybe eat his fish or I'm not really, I'm not really sure. You, you can tell it's a mature eagle because it's it's got all the white on its head, which is good. He came in pretty, he came in pretty close just there. I'm sure you all can see me, well no you actually can't. Um, but on this side of the lens I'm using my pinky to manual focus. Um, and I'm talking to you all now because he's, he's pretty far away. I, I think he's probably about to leave. He's high um, in the air and he's 
slowly getting further that way, which is further away from me. Um, anyways, uh, manual focus with my pinky here while I do my other things with my right hand on my camera and I hold the um, lens steady with these three fingers and my thumb on the other side. And this is just moving my manual focus ring right here. Um, it, it's not very ideal, but it is effective and it works. So I just kind of go with it. Um, I can still see the eagle, but he's super far away. Like he's even, he's too far away for me to pick up good on 1500 millimeters. So um, I know a lot of those aren't gonna be in focus because when a bird is flying, um, granted it's a bigger bird, so he's not like going super fast or anything, but it's still hard to um, manual focus a bird. It, it's hard for auto fo focus to work on a bird when it's flying in the air. So um, I'm sure there's gonna be more that are out of focus than in focus, but I'm fairly confident that out of all of the photos I just snapped, I am going to have some that are sharp and look good. And I really hope that I do because it had a fish, which is insane. Uh, so any of the photos that worked out, I'm going to put on your um, screens now. So I think it's about time that I close up today's video. Um, I've had a whole lot of luck today and I couldn't be more pleased. Um, I heard a chirp, I don't know if you all heard it on the mic. It's kind of faint so it probably didn't pick it up. But it looks as if a red-headed woodpecker is on this tree right beside me. There is like a hole that looks like a woodpecker would go back in and it, it's pretty close to there, which is also kind of close to where the squirrels were coming in and coming out um, earlier. Um, he's moving up the tree, but the tree, the tree that he's on right now isn't super close to me, but like, you know, I can still get some pretty good photos because I'm at 1500 millimeters, so. Um, he's just chilling. Zooming in close on the back of my LCD screen, I can see that the photos are in focus that I've taken of him so far. So, um, I'm actually just gonna leave him alone for now. Um, those photos are great. I don't wanna scare him off with the shutter on my camera. I really don't wanna scare him off talking, but I gotta talk. Um, it is a more rare bird, so I'm pretty excited that I just got to see one of those. Um, I'm going to throw those photos on your screen right now and then I'll close up the video. So that is all I have for today's video unless another bird wants to fly out right now and surprise me while I'm standing here. Um, it's been a great video. I've had a whole lot of luck. I'm so excited to go inside and edit those eagle photos because those are going to be, I, I'm, I just know they're going to be great. Like, it's an eagle. It can't not be great. I mean, it's the nation's bird. So I am beyond excited that I was able to capture that in case you can't tell. Um, uh, I am getting close to a thousand subscribers, so if you're new around here, I would appreciate it if you would take the initiative to go and subscribe. I have a giveaway coming up. Um, when I hit 1K, I'm going to be giving some things away. I'm not going to go into the details of that yet. That will be coming up on my Instagram and coming up on this channel in a pretty soon video because I'm getting closer to 1K and I want to let you all know what you're going to be winning before... Um, I hit 1K. I plan to have three winners, um, but that's I'm going to leave it at about right there right now. Um, so I think you all are going to like that giveaway. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching today's video. Like I said, if you haven't subscribed, I would really appreciate it. If you would subscribe, go down below, like the video, hit the notification bell, do all of those fun things that help me out. Um, you might not know it helps me out, but it does. That is all I have for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you all have an amazing day.